This evening's Mass is offered for the souls inscribed in our parish prayers for All Souls Day. The priest celebrates three Masses for the souls in purgatory. So this is my first. Tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock is my second. And tomorrow evening at 7 is my third. I know you've come for all saints. It's okay, even though I'm saying the soul's mass. Trust me, I know these things. You're safe. You're fulfilling your holy day obligation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. So may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, and as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. This also we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. first reading, a reading from the second book of the Maccabees. Judas rallied his army and went to the city of Adullam. As the week was ending, they purified themselves according to custom and kept the Sabbath there. On the following day, since the task had now become urgent, Judas and his men went to gather up the bodies of the slain and bury them with their kinsmen in their ancestral tombs. But under the tunic of each of the dead, they found amulets sacred to the idols of Jamnia, which the law forbids the Jews to wear. So it was clear to all that this was why these men had been slain. They all therefore praised the ways of the Lord, the just judge who brings to light the things that are hidden. Turning to supplication, they prayed that the sinful deed might be fully blotted out. The noble Judas warned the soldiers to keep themselves free from sin, for they had seen with their own eyes what happened because of the sin of those who had fallen. He then took up a collection among all the soldiers, amounting to 
2,000 silver drachmas, which he sent to Jerusalem to provide for an expiatory sacrifice. In doing this, he acted in a very excellent and noble way, inasmuch as he had the resurrection of the dead the resurrection of the dead in view. For if, for if he were not expecting the fallen to rise again, it would have been useless and foolish to pray for them in death. But if he did this with a view to the splendid reward that awaits those who have gone to rest in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Thus he made atonement for the dead, that they might be freed from this sin. Psalm response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. After he had sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, they will see God. Blessed the peacemakers, they will be called children of God. Blessed are they persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you, persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice, be glad. Your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As All Saints Day draws to a close, and All Souls Day dawns on us, with the vigil of All Souls Day. We turn to something, All Souls Day, that is uniquely Catholic. It is part of our belief as Catholics. People like to say, oh, so it's all the same. Well, a lot is the same. We do hold 
many things in common with people who follow other Christian traditions. But All Souls Day is uniquely Catholic. It's based on the practice of the church and the books of the Bible from the very beginning. For 1,500 years, Catholics practiced All Souls Day. Then came the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s. And one of the chief reformers in particular didn't like the idea of purgatory because he was afraid. He knew he was a sinner, good for him, we all are, but he was afraid of, well, I'm going to be burning in purgatory for hundreds and hundreds of years, and I don't like that. I'm not comfortable with that. No, God's not going to do that. So that particular reformer took the Old Testament book of Maccabees, which is the clearest Old Testament refuge, reference to purgatory, and he took it out of the Bible. He said, no, this isn't a real Bible book. So he just ripped out those pages. There was another one of the epistles, St. Paul's epistle to the Hebrews. He ripped that one out, too, because he didn't like what was in there. But 1,500 years, Catholic Church had these books in the Bible and observed All Souls Day. 500 years later, we still, as Catholics, do. What is that all about? We heard Darlene read the first reading from the second book of Maccabees. Second book of Maccabees, in the Old Testament, the part of the Bible before Jesus came. The second book of Maccabees happened maybe 150 years before our Lord came into the world. And in the second book of Maccabees, it tells us that the Jewish people were controlled by pagan kings. They were occupied, and there was a rebellion. And one by one, they drove out the pagans who were occupying the Holy Land. The last battle of this war after the battle, and this is where the book begins, they go to take the bodies of the Jewish soldiers who had fought to free Israel. Boy, things don't change, do they? They went to take the bodies to bury them. And as they were preparing the bodies of the soldiers to be buried, they found that the soldiers were wearing pagan charms to protect them. They were breaking the first commandment. The first commandment, God told us, we must not worship any other gods. We must not participate in superstitious practices. And that's very hard to do when you live in a world where people practice this freely in the ancient world, in today's world. As Catholics, we're not supposed to do that. These guys went into battle, and they wanted to be protected. They wanted to be saved from death in battle. And rather than turn to God, they turned to pagan gods. And they went to the pagan priests and they got these good luck amulets, and they were wearing them. So when they went to bury them, and they go to wash the bodies, and they saw they were wearing these amulets, they say, they died in mortal sin. They broke the first commandment. So the one who had led the army, his name was Judas Maccabeus, he said, they were young, they were foolish, but they sinned. We have to ask God to forgive their sins. Yeah. So he took up a collection among all the other soldiers. And it said, 
It was a big play. Like thousands and thousands of dollars were collected because all the other soldiers were horrified. Our, our buddies died in sin. So they took up this collection and they brought it to the temple in Jerusalem and they said, let prayers be offered so that their sins will be forgiven and their souls can go to heaven. And the passage ended with saying, and this was a worthy and good thing to do. This was 150 years before Christ came. Ever since then, it's been the consistent practice of our Catholic faith. We say to ourselves, for anyone who dies with unforgiven sins, for anyone who dies having lived a life in which for a long period of time they neglected God, maybe they were sorry at the end, all the things they should have done, all the things they could have done, weren't done, they died in a sense, not having fulfilled what God wanted them to fulfill. We all could do this. It's very easy. It means there's a situation in my family. There's a situation at work. There's a situation in my neighborhood. And people are all against each other and fighting and very angry. And what do I do? Do I try to bring peace? Do I keep my mouth shut not to make it worse? No, I add fuel to the fire and I make it worse. That's not what God wanted me to do. Now there was a situation where God could have been a little more present if I had allowed him, but I did not. I failed in what I was supposed to do. How many sins do you and I commit through laziness. Things I was supposed to do, I could have done that. It would have made someone else very happy if I did that. But just laziness, and I didn't do it. How many times, even with God, again, the sins of the soldiers were sins of young people. Dumb things to do. How many times young people in dumbness blow away worship of God? Now I don't have to go to church. I don't have to say my prayers. I'm going to live forever. I'll worry about it later. And maybe at different times in our lives we've all done that. So like the soldiers in today's first reading, except for saints, how do we know that people go before God totally clean of sins? How do we know that there are not unforgiven sins? So All Souls Day is a particular day of the year when we pray as Catholics for the souls in purgatory. Souls of people that we know and died, souls of people we don't know, what they did not put in the world, the concern, the kindness, the goodness, we replace it for them by our prayers for the souls in purgatory. And we also call to mind our own sinfulness, which sometimes we excuse very lightly, that it's something we really should get a control over and not just say, oh, that's part of me. I, I'm a wonderful person, except when I get angry. And then boy, do the people around me get singed if I get angry. Sometimes we excuse ourselves much too easily. This wonderful opportunity that we have to pray for the souls in purgatory is an important part of our Catholic faith because it puts us in the right place of where we are. We have to walk through life 
being careful not to offend God or hurt other people. And if we have, we have to be conscious of it, confess our sins, and ask God's forgiveness. And for those who didn't, in the foolishness of youth or ignorance, we offer our prayers. And we particularly have devotion to making the plenary indulgence. Christ gave St. Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And he said, when you open the door, it will be open. If you shut it, it will be shut. Throughout the ages, the popes on the All Souls Day, give us the ability to open the door to heaven for one soul. We offer our Mass, we offer our Holy Communion. Tomorrow, on the Feast of All Souls, November 2nd, we make a visit to church. We say the prayers, it's in the bulletin, the prayers to say for a soul. And the other thing, is we go to confession and we offer a confession to the souls in purgatory. And I always think to myself, boy, if there's one thing he's going to get me on, it's putting off the confession to the point where I no longer even remember the thing I should have asked forgiveness for. So the confession we offer for a soul in purgatory is an important part of those prayers. In the Reformation, there was one reformer in particular. He didn't feel comfortable with this. And the reason was because he was afraid. He was afraid of having to make up for his sins. Someone should have told him about the Sacred Heart and God's mercy. All he would have had to do is be sorry for those sins. We join in prayer, all souls day, for those who through neglect, ignorance, just being dumb, weren't sorry for their sins in time. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us bread of life. Blessed are you, By the mystery of this, water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit, contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Lord, his name. Again, let us pray. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into the glory 
with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift it up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For as one alone, he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man, he chose to die, so that in your sight, we might all live forever. So in the company of angels, we praise you. With joy, we proclaim. Sanctus, 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 Sanctus Dominus Deus, Sanctus, 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 You are indeed holy. O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray. Partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember, brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, 
her spouse, blessed apostles, the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. To us who receive it, amen. On your stay, hey, we tell this day, God down On your stay, we tell this day, God down with me. Miserere nobis. On your stay, we tell this day, God down with me. Dona nobis passion. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I have not the Lord the O body of Christ, keep me safe.
who would make the plenary indulgence. It's explained in the bulletin. You've already fulfilled two of the requirements. If you've gone to Mass, you've received Holy Communion. You offered that for a soul. Tomorrow, all souls say, church is open until eight in the evening. You stop in church, you say the prayers. Five our fathers, hail Marys, glory be for the intentions of the Pope and the Queen. Well, I don't know the Queen. It's in the Missalite. We believe in one God. You say those prayers for um, all souls say in church. Confession, that's the tough one. You could go Saturday at four o'clock, but what I'll do is I'll make it very easy. Maybe I'll get some grace from the souls too. I'll go to confession after Mass if anyone would wish to go to confession for the plenary indulgence. <clears throat> Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants for whom we have celebrated this sacrament may pass over to the dwelling place of light and peace, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.